Hey friends, today I'm going to go around and do a video tour of the backyard. I meant to have this up yesterday, but we got crazy thunderstorms and that was beautiful for the garden. So I'm not going to complain <laughs> that I missed a day of videotaping. So we're going to go out and head and take a tour. I actually haven't been in the garden for two days other than bare minimum because of the scattered rain and things going on with my children. So I'm just as excited as you are to see how much progress we've made. Okay, start in the same place as always. These tomatoes look good. These are the Red Robin little tomatoes and they have buds on them. These are so cool. I'm so interested in what these do. I've never grown a small tomato like this before, so that'll be fun. These are Gumfrina and I did throw some marjoram seeds in here, but those take forever to come up and they're really tiny. So that might be a little while before we see something over there. Back here, this must have gotten a bunch of water in here. These are all basil. So that's Genovese basil coming up nice. I also have got some basil coming up in here. This is lemon basil with a snapdragon. And these are those mar or, um, chamomiles, marguerite chamomiles. It's got a bud on it. <gasps> that one's got a bud on it. They look rough, but I split them in half and they've got a bunch of dead roots and dead stuff. I trimmed as much as I could away, but I didn't want to shock the plant too much. I'm going to leave it alone. There's some alyssum in the front. And then here is one that I haven't touched that's about ready to bloom. So those are looking okay. I still have not got all my pots out. I got a whole collection of them right there waiting. I might not this year. Oh, look, I got, a, I got a bunch over here too. It might not happen. I might put the pots away for the year and say, look, it looks like this is planted. Look at the beautiful weeds I'm growing. That actually might be something, but those are all weeds. Okay, here is the big garden bed on this side and she is looking just gorgeous let's start on top um over here in the corner i have got some snapdragons and some dahlias or not dahlias zinnias that i planted and i also started some seeds down there they're coming up and look at this volunteer dill i'm gonna have to come in here and give this guy a haircut holy cow look how thick of a stem that dill has got on it that is just lovely. I'm really excited about that. And I was just watching one of my videos from last year and thinking my tomatoes were not as good, but look at here. Do you see the trusses on those? Here come the tomatoes, guys. I'm gonna have to get out here and tie up the next layer of them already. They're looking fabulous. This one's got tomatoes, that one's got... This one looks small and stubby. I don't know if it's a problem with the tomato or if it's a variety. I'm gonna have to look at that. Ooh, my hands smell like dill now. So my garlic, I cut all the scapes off and I'm gonna say usually about a two weeks after I cut scapes off, it's time for me to pull it. You'll see it's starting to die off here. And if you look at the bottom of garlic, it's kind of got pairs of leaves. These ones are kind of dead. I'll probably wait till this next set is totally dead and then I'll go ahead and pull it. So I'm just kind of watching those bottom leaves carefully and as they go I will uh I'll make my decisions then I'm done. thanks Ava and then right here I've got a snapdragon volunteering can you see it's gonna butt out oh this is super fun I do not know what this is it doesn't smell like dill or look like dill I almost think it's bachelor button that'd be funny okay more tomatoes these guys are getting tall. They're almost as tall as my fence. They all have got buds on them. This is a tree trying to grow here. You cannot live here, friend. In here, this is all the volunteer flowers. Look how pretty this calendula is gonna be. It's just so pretty. Total volunteer. Look right here, I got a bean growing. These beans are interplanted back there behind the tomatoes because I want to let them dry out back there in the end of the season. Look, there's some volunteer. I love it. Yeah, this guy's falling straight forward. Look how big this guy is. I need to get out here. All right, sorry guys, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit everywhere today. Ooh, more calendula. Pretty much this is a tomato and garlic jungle with a whole bunch of volunteer flowers. Can we just call it that? There's some more calendula, snapdragons, 
And then back in the corner, I've got that squash coming up. And then I've got this beautiful sunflower growing here too. So that is very exciting stuff. I'm really excited about that. Down here in the bottom, hey chickens. They're all lining up like, where's our snacks? Hi, what's going on? I'll bring you some snacks in a minute, okay? In a minute. I do have one of those center cut squash popping up there. You think so, huh? And then these are all zinnias, they're Baneri giants. And I planted some more seeds too. The nasturtiums are taken off. These are gonna be lovely. There's more here. There's a nasturtium. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. I went all in on nasturtium this year, guys. Let me tell you. All right, so Baneri Giants, volunteer flowers. Now, here are my pepper plants. They're very small. Oh my gosh, there's one underneath there. I might have to, I hate to kill a volunteer flower, but it might have to happen. Um, none in here, so they must have all died. Well, there's one. I might need, I might not get a lot of there, a lot of not apenos this year. These are all not apenos in here, so I might have to go hunting. But for if I have to go to the uh, farmer's market and buy something, jalapenos are fairly easy to find here. So I'm not going to be too upset about that. I have got, look, at, I'm going to show you what this is. This is a nasturtium. And this brown on here, that's actually sunburn. And I saw somebody in a gardening forum asking what that was, if their plants were doomed. It's sunburn. These leaves are kind of doomed. But the plant's just fine. It's going to be okay. This lettuce has all got to come out of here this week because it's getting huge. And it's starting to bolt. You can see there's like a seed head in the middle. Actually, let me get close so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it's starting to flower in the middle? This lettuce is going to get kind of yucky. Now this one, oh, that's got one too. See? And they kind of get, um, they kind of get tower shaped. Instead of full, they end up like looking like a tower. So you can kind of tell those ones are going. That one's going. This one's probably the only one that's okay still. This is, I think, Black Seeded Simpson, which I think can handle that a little bit. These peppers in here look a lot better. They're taller. Um, they're a little bit sturdier stemmed. They got some branching going on. These are banana peppers, which is good because if I had to pick one pepper we need, it's banana peppers. And then on the end, I have got, now see, these are bachelor buttons. So those other ones are not bachelor buttons. I don't know what the other ones are. They're a mystery plant. These are Sam and Janina asters I planted. And they are more of a fall flower. All right, that is beautiful. Let's go over here. Here's where things come to die. This, <laughs> look at, this is a winterstone dill. She's like, I'm gonna make a flower. I admire your persistence, Dill. I'm sorry that I killed you. All the buckets with herbs, mint, nasturtium, lemon balm, a little bit of yarrow. I got a bunch of dying pea vines in here that I'll have to come clean out shortly. Coneflower. And then I'm going to have to redo the this tower. This is a green stock planter. I'm going to pull all these peas out of here and replant this with something. I do have beans on top, and these are Scarlet Runner beans, and they are growing fantastic, and you can see they are growing up, 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 and that is gonna be gorgeous. They make the prettiest flowers, all the pollinators love them, and they make food. It's pretty cool. Same thing with this tower. I've got a little bit of chamomile on top, but I've got just this random spattering of little beets, and then a couple giant beets, and these are going to end up just getting roasted probably. And then I'm going to reset this one too. Down here I have got some flowers. These are pincushion mix. I planted these. It's a volunteer snapdragon and some anise hyssop. Oh, huh, look at you. Beautiful. Um, I can't wait to see what these do. I've never had them before. So I'm excited to see how those grow. Here's kind of the wilderness back here. This... It's a calendula with some anise hyssop, some calendula anise hyssop. I have lots of anise hyssop. This is going to take over my yard. I'm probably going to have to pull some of these. Nothing to it. This one right here is a lemon balm. I did plant that one. <laughs> 
And these are volunteer tomatoes. Look at this one. Look at this. This is a volunteer tomato. I didn't plant this crazy thing. I might end up pulling it if I ever get back here, but for now I'm letting it go. Some calendula. There's all the kale. And I keep trying to grow something up this back fence here. Beans and squash. Look, I got one little bean guy down there. Can you see him? Um, another bean guy. Not having much luck. Not having much. Ooh, look at I lied. You see that? That's a squash and a nasturtium. If those two grow up well together, that's going to be beautiful there. And there's a nasturtium behind it. All right. I have hope. I have hope. It's going to be good. Here is giant oregano. Oh, my goodness. Volunteer tomatoes everywhere. And I did plant cat grass in this, but my dogs dug it out. So I might get rid of this wheelbarrow. It's a great idea in theory, but it's very shallow and hard to keep watered. It either gets too wet, or if I have too many holes in it, it gets too dry. I'll have to think about it. Maybe it would be a good planter for succulents or sedum. Back here, this was getting huge. That's fantastic. Look at this is the runner guy. See how that's a stem? So I'll start kind of weaving him around here and tying him to this pole. Same thing with this nasturtium and this nasturtium. And they will grow up this pole together and be lovely by my order. <laughs> I have decreed it, so let it happen. Chamomile. Canterbury bells. I've never grown Canterbury bells before. I have failed to grow them many times, but now I've got them coming. They are a perennial. I might not get flowers this year. I've got a coneflower and some more anise hyssop here in this pot. And these guys might get moved too. I don't know. We'll see. On this side of the yard, things are looking gorgeous. Listen, you know what? After a good rain, it just feels like the garden grows leaps and bounds. There's just something about the natural minerals and things in there. Uh oh, look at this bean. I'm not climbing in there right now, but that bean's starting to go the wrong way. Those beans need to go up this way. I might have to give them a little something to hang on to. Those are sugar pie pumpkins. There is some Dara growing there, and all these little baby guys are asters. Again, they come up in the end of the summer, so I'm not worried about them at all. Here is the parsley. And here are the baby parsleys, so that's fantastic. I'm going to have a big grope parsley here. The rest of the front row is all lettuce. Lettuce, 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 lettuce. And here is the dara. Now, you can just kind of start seeing the purpley pink hue to it. That's the first purpley flower in a week. These guys are going to be so gorgeous, guys. I'm obsessed with it. Look at them all. Look at them all. It's kind of a weird thing to be obsessed with. I know. It just happens. These tomatoes also look fantastic. Lots and lots of blooms. Lots of blooms. Couple little tomatoes. Hi, guys. Ooh. I need to see what variety this is. There's lots of tomatoes on this one. It's got tomatoes. These again are gonna to need to be tied up a little bit more. They're starting to kind of come off a little bit. Hello. And then down here past this lettuce, I just threw in some French breakfast radishes. That's a volunteer lettuce that I'll feed to the chickens. These are some calendula that popped up on their own. And this is a balloon flower that I'm hoping to save. Here in the corner, <laughs> I'm so glad I put this Rubinata Cosmo here. Look at it. It's just kind of like taken over the corner. It's softened all the edges of these kind of ugly blocks. Ugh. They're beautiful. They start out this nice deep red. It's just such a pretty palette. I love it. It's going to look gorgeous when this anise hyssop flowers behind it. Those are both anise hyssop and they are beautiful purple with this. And then I've got back here all these Cosmos back here and these kind of beat down because of the rain but these have these beautiful like cylinder petals they're gorgeous that's gonna be beautiful down here this is the minnesota midget minnesota midget melon colony i need to do a little bit of weeding in here it looks like but i've got quite a few of them up i got a calendula coming up over there and there's the delphinium that i gotta get planted in the ground 
So all in all, the backyard is looking really, really lovely and lush. And I'm really, really happy with it. She beautiful. This planter box out here, I can barely see the blocks anymore. Let me tell you this. If you don't have a spot to put something, these blocks work very, very well. They're ugly as sin. However, if you've got enough soil in there and you keep it moistured, it is fantastic. Uh, all of this would be stuff that I could not grow. This is like packed soil next to my driveway. But if I wouldn't have added this up and added some soil, it would be useless space. And now look at what is in it. It's beautiful. I've got strawberries. Look at all these guys popping out. Ava comes out and snacks on all of these. Here is the celery. Oh, everything's really wet. <laughs> look at those roots on, or those stalks on the celery. They're all doing fantastic. Over here. Now I have seen quite a few cabbage moths out lately. If I see one, I'll go ahead and take a video of it. But these cabbage aren't going to make it. But I'm going to leave them here as sacrificial plants. Go ahead and eat these ones and leave my other ones alone, maybe. This is what I thought a cauliflower, but perhaps it's broccoli. I can't tell you. I'm very confused with my purple broccoli slash cauliflower. I don't know what's going on with it. I couldn't tell you. Same thing here and here. It does look like I'm getting another head in here. I don't know if you want to call that broccoli or cauliflower. It looks and tastes like broccoli. I swear it's a cauliflower seed. But I've been wrong before. Not often, friends, but before. That's a running joke because my husband always thinks I think I'm right. Which could be true. These are all the calendula down here. And look, they're all starting to flower. This is going to be so pretty. The ranunculus. Oh, they're sad. I'm going to pick um, a couple of these flowers and maybe dry press some petals with Ava. But for the most part... Goodbye. You were beautiful. Now over here, I did plant some sunflower seeds and I still don't have any up. I'm confused by that, but I will not give up friends. You have my word. These are zinnias that look really, really rough. I did put some seed in here too though. So maybe I'll get some a little bit later in the season with some French rosemary. And then in this corner, I came in and trimmed the bottom of those sunflowers like I talked about to give things underneath here more light so back here I do have those Kajari melon babies coming up and then these are all the ranunculus that are dying out which I'm leaving till they die out and then I'll have to do something with those corms and then I went to cut this sunflower the bottoms and it's a branching sunflower and it has heads everywhere like everywhere Everywhere there are sunflowers coming out of it. It's amazing. It's probably a Fantasia sunflower. <gasps> Look at this cool bug. Can I get to it? Do you see it? It's bright yellow flying bug. Who knows what that is? Okay, I stopped to take pictures of that. We'll try and identify it if I can. Oh, this is just so pretty. So this might kill a lot of things in here because it's taking up so much room and so much sun. But the only thing behind it is that great big tomato. You see it back there? It's real big. And I'm going to come in and tie that up here so it can get sun on this side. And then I might, this might end up stunting. There's actually four Kajari melons back there. And if I just get two but I get the sunflower. I'm going to consider that a great trade. If this bed is a tomato, two melons, and a bunch of sunflowers, and then in the front, these are all zinnias I planted. Uh, that, that will be a gorgeous bed. It might even be my most favorite bed I have. Totally by accident. Okay, moving on to the side of the house in the driveway. These Mikado poppies are beautiful. And they're starting to seed. So this is how the seeds turn out. They're all pretty green still. As I go this season, I'll try and show you how I save seeds. Not that it's saving me in my seed buying bill because I'm obsessed and I buy too many anyway. <laughs> uh, behind it is 
This is the best cherry tomato I have. It's the only one that's large. It's huge. I'm, oh, look, I got cherry tomatoes on it. I'm holding off tying it up because I want to cut these peas out of here, but <laughs> look how dead they are. I stripped this. There was no peas on this, and I still am getting peas and blooms on top. So there's a giant part of me that wants to leave it alone. However, I'm only going to give it until after this rain to see if those develop, and then I'm going to take it out because I need to get these tomatoes going. There's one there. There's one here. And then there's one kind of medium one back here. And if I want them to flourish, I, I'm, I'm going to need to take these peas out. <gasps> Look, here is my volunteer sunflower. What's going on with the inside of it? I don't even know what's going on. <sighs> it got rained on pretty heavily. That's pretty. It's super pretty. Okay. Nothing going on in here. This needs to be watered and replanted. I think we're going to do some bush beans and see if we can get those to grow. Over here, these beans look a lot better. They get a little bit less direct sun. They get the house from the, uh, the shade from the neighbor's house. So I have quite a few peas <laughs> still going up to my windows. That's fantastic. But behind them, I also do have some pretty healthy tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes. They're starting to find their way through. There's one back there. And then I've got a couple kohlrabi here that look like they're getting eaten by bugs pretty badly. I'll probably leave them alone as kind of sacrificial plants, just like I did on the other side, so that the bugs eat these and leave other things alone. I do have sunflowers growing here. And then over in this box, this is mostly flowers, the dianthus. I've got some zinnia popping up. These are those cactus ones I had last year that I just fell in love with. I never liked the way they looked on packages or online, but I love how they look in person. They're fantastic. What are you doing? You better be doing good things for my soil and not eating my plants. Up here, I've got some asters, and these are all the strawberry plants my sister gave me. And then in the back are the sunflowers, and I got a couple little cosmos there. That looks good. We're supposed to have more rain today and into tomorrow, and then it'll be time to come out and weed and clean up a little bit. Out front, I've made some mistakes. And listen, this is not unusual for me. Let's start up here. Up here on the porch, these urns have got fuchsias in them, and they're doing okay, but they're not flowering. And um, I'm not really sure if they were the right choice for here or not. We'll find out. But my lemon tree's up here. She's doing terrible. The Boston ferns, terrible. Um, you can see over here in this planter box, everything is dead. It's not great, friends. It's not my best work. I'm not really good with planters like I am with a garden. It's a giant fail. But this isn't a fail. <laughs> Look how good this is doing. Here are some nasturtiums, and it looks like something's been eating them, but they'll be all right. I got a kale back here. Something is eating them. Who, who's after them? This beautiful, beautiful um, hydrangea. Ah, listen, anything that's related to my busha is flourishing this year, and I love that. It's like she's down here in my garden helping the girl out. Got some begonias down here. This will get much, much bigger as the season goes on. Same thing over here, mirror image. This hydrangea is a little bit slower than the other one. It's funny how they're right here, what, eight feet away from each other? <laughs> the growth pattern's so different. This one's got a much larger kale, smaller hydrangea. It must get more shade. Only two of the nasturtium came up. I don't know, that's funny. All right, let's head back here. This, it's my biggest fail. I don't even know. I've had, a, I've had a bunch of fails this year, guys, but that is okay because I've had a bunch of wins too, right? So I'm gonna scooch in here a little bit. So you can see I've got a nasturtium coming up, which should take over that, uh, that little trellis in theory. None of the beans or cucumbers have come up, none. So I have those seeds planted in the back, which I'm hoping come up and I'll be able to plant those out here. If it doesn't happen, I'll probably come back and replant some more beans. That's probably my goal. 
Here is the clematis. I can't even get it in one shot. I'd have to turn the camera. Look at She's so pretty. She's so pretty. I love her so much. Um, she gets these beautiful ruffly flowers. They just look gorgeous. And I'm so happy that I got to clean up the house like this because it's going to be so much better for the plant. It's going to give it some, um, some airflow, some room to grow, room to get the sun. Look at all those buds. You gorgeous. You so pretty. Mama loves you. Over this way, it got the kale going good. The peony that will not flower this year. Some sage. The um, honeysuckle is starting to die off. And this happens every year. The flowers all kind of fall off. And it starts to get some new green growth. And then it will usually come back and give me another really pretty flourish later on in the summer. So what I might do, because I've got aphids on here, is I might come through and cut and prune some of these heads off as they're dying. I'm going to look into it and see if that's a bad idea first. But that might uh, help it a little bit. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I planted some zinnia down there, but they have not popped up yet. But I do have a little salvia over here and a poppy. This is a long-term project. You're not going to see a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of movement this year on this, but it's a work in progress. Okay, let's head into this beautiful mess. I love it. First, the coreopsis has bloomed. These are great. If you dead have these coreopsis, they will bloom all summer long, pretty much right up to the frost. So I've got a big plant right here growing out of the crack of the sidewalk. I originally planted it right here. Half of that plant died, and then I've got a little one coming back. So I'm going to have a big flourish of Coreopsis here. I also planted another kind of Coreopsis back here. And um, it's more delicate looking than this one. It's called Incredible Swirl, I think. This is that crazy black-eyed Susan plant, I believe, that I did not plant. It has got tons and tons of stuff going on. I guess we'll find out. And then I've got like this... I don't know, stone crappy sedum thing under here. And then let's step back here. Here's the polka dot plant. That's not its real name. The poppy I grew. I planted some seeds in here, but it's not looking like they're coming up. Here's all the lilies. They got transplanted last year, and they're not looking soup. They look okay, but I'm wondering if they might not flower this year. We'll see. And then we come back into here. This has been the bane of my existence, but look. I have beans. beans, 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 beans. No beans this way though. <laughs> but I have some that are kind of just popping out of the ground and it looks like they're getting eaten. So that's kind of helping me figure out what's going on here. <gasps> Look it. Can you see it in there? Look at all those little bugs. Eating my gosh damn bean. Oh, well, mystery solved, I think, guys. What to do about this? I'm going to have to put started plants in here, I think. You rotten son of guns. I give you a home, I bring you good food, and you go and eat my beans, you sons of a gun. My flowers over here in the corner are doing really good. They got a whopping from the rain, but they're going to be just fine. I planted some zinnias in there. Those are going to be beautiful. Oh. Dang it. Moving on from the dang bugs, killing my crops. All the chicks and hens look fantastic. This, aren't you pretty? That's such a pretty delicate pink. I love snapdragons. Got some more stone crop sedum type things. I got a couple Figaro dahlias I planted in here among the sweet woodruff. Up in here, these are probably that's woodruff. There's kale. There's some asters I planted. And then I don't remember planting this columbine here, but she lives there. So I still have not cleaned out my dead irises. They live. Moving across the back row. Those are flocks that are getting really tall around the birdbath there. They will flower pretty soon. The sage is pretty much all petered out. You can see that's all the spent blooms right there. Some stevia, the chives. I might need to plant another thing of chives. 
and then Boucher's rose bush. <laughs> so the roses are starting to peter out, and, but it's growing this great big crazy runner. Somebody tell me what to do with this crazy runner. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to do a little research. The daisies are all starting though. They're going to be pop. Whoa, mom almost fell off a stool. All right. Look at those. I'm going to have a whole bunch of daisies popping up pretty soon. That's going to be really, really, really pretty. So as one thing dies, another thing grows and takes its spot. The irises die, the flocks go up. I'd like to say I did that on purpose, but total fluke. Down on the bottom, I've got all kinds of creeping sages, sedums, stone crop, all those things. Uh, these wild geraniums are starting to um, go to seed. These will seed themselves everywhere. I am gonna go ahead and give those a giant haircut after this rain. I probably should have done it before the rain, but life, friends, life. That's Dianthus. There's some garlic chives back there. The lupins. The lupins uh, will kind of die off and then come back again, but they're going to make these little pods, and this is where their seeds live. Can you see that, kind of? Yep. The seeds live in there, and they actually are poisonous to your animals, so don't bring them in the house and let your animals get them, but I let them dry out outside. Oh, look, here's a new one starting. This is going to look like when they're starting. So I'm going to get a new little guy right here as this guy bites the dust. Good. I like that. Snapdragons. This fever few is so pretty. Isn't that just piles and piles and piles of flowers? I'm liking it. <gasps> Look at this. This crazy sunflower is probably only, it's not even two feet tall, guys, and it's making it sunflower hot already. Look, this one is too. That's as tall as they're going to get. That's hilarious. Well, I can't wait to see it. Oh, it's got a head right here. One, two, three, four. This is going to be so pretty. <laughs> Those I did not put there. Did I put them there? I don't remember. Listen, the season's getting away from me. These here are blue daisies. <gasps> Look at that. This is going to be really pretty. Oh, but look it. You stupid guys. <gasps> Get off. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to do some research. You sons of guns. <laughs> Back here at the bean teepee, I'm getting a couple beans. And a couple not, and a couple beans. So hopefully I get something going up this teepee pretty soon. So it doesn't look like I just got a pile of wood in my garden. Oregano, you look lovely. I just gave this oregano a haircut and she still looks gorgeous. Volunteer snapdragons. Zoop. Look at them all in the end. Oh, they're so pretty. But first, up here, I do have dahlias I started from seed. And I planted sunflowers behind them, but I'm not seeing nothing. But even if it's just dahlias, I'll take it. I'll take it. Back this way. Look at this is the coneflower that is growing here. And I think this one's called Twister. Like it's got like the little limey green on it. That's pretty. Look at all the heads on it. That's going to be really, really pretty. All the volunteer snapdragons. This little begonia that I couldn't resist because look at the color on it. She's so pretty. This is that Dara. And I've got a nasturtium climbing out of there. That's phlox behind it in the ground. <sighs> that clematis is dead, dead. I don't think there's any save in it. But the tithonia back there is getting really big. That's going to start growing fast. I'm excited about that. And back there, look at all the beans and nasturtium coming up. They're going to grow up here. This corner looks so ugly now. And in a month, you're not going to be able to see anything back there. It's just going to be just a mass of beans and nasturtium and tithonia flower. You wait. I'm telling you, it's happening. This line is looking lovely. The cone flowers are almost ready to pop here. They're so tall. This right here is even with my nose. Like, hang on. Look, I'm standing flat-footed. Look how tall these are. Granted, they're up like a foot. But that's still a really tall coneflower. <laughs> Moving now, I've got coneflowers. I've got these Brussels sprouts. I don't know if they're ever going to do anything. They're making little, little tiny Brussels in the corners. But um, all my sunflowers I planted are coming up. They're not getting super tall yet. This one's got a bud on it already. That's odd. 
We'll see how that works out. Look at this Brussels sprout. It's huge. Look, that's got more little Brussels in the corner. I might get Brussels sprouts out of this one. It's just giant. That's fun. More coneflowers. More coneflowers. Getting ready. Um, at sunflowers in here. Coneflowers, coneflowers, coneflowers. Coneflowers, coneflowers, coneflowers. I put zinnia seed in here. I might have to come through and put a little bit more in. I don't know if that's thick enough for me yet. And then I've got more sunflowers with zinnia underneath. There's a coneflower. Sunflowers, zinnia. So pretty much the same pattern all the way down. That's gonna be lovely. You won't see this fence in a month either. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. All right, so here are all the sunflowers that I said I was gonna move out of my garden that I never did. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two down there, seven, eight. <sighs> life, life. Look at this one's gonna have a head. What are you doing? Um, on this end of the garden, everything cold hardy. It's all doing well, but it's not making anything. Oh, look, this is another one of those. Is it a cabbage? It is a cauliflower. Is it a cauliflower? Is it a broccoli? It's the purple headed thing and it's making a head. Fantastic. The rest of this, just some kale here. Not doing too much. Not doing too much. Not doing too much. The beans have kind of come in fairly good, better than I thought they were going to. So I have dragon tongue beans and some kind of yellow bean. I forget. But they're coming in okay. Um, the cabbages look lovely. Like, I'm probably not going to get a cabbage out of this. You know, like it's so bug. But um, I'll let it get big and then I'll feed it to the chickens. And they will love it. And they will keep the bugs busy. Squashes are starting to get up and big. I meant to move squashes around. I haven't done that either. I don't know what the... I do not know what that means. Like, I do not know if that's going to be good for them, bad for them. Am I going to be overrun with squash? I do not know. To be determined. Zinnias and... Um, whoa, this is a Swiss chard from last year. And it looks like it's going to seed. I've never had a Swiss chard go to seed in my yard before. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to let it go and get myself some seeds. Why not? More zinnias on this side. The beans have filled in a lot. These ones are doing really, really well. I do have to come in here and weed after the rain's done. These cabbages look so much better than the other ones. They actually are not being attacked by bugs. and They've got a head, so maybe the bugs will stay that way on those ones. And I'll end up getting a couple cabbages over here. That would be great. Just great. Here is that watermelon. And its neighbor is definitely a watermelon. And that's a weed. And I didn't get anything where I planted this. Oh, look. I got two more over here. Uh-oh. Friends, it's starting to look like maybe a watermelon broke right here. And I'm going to end up with 8,000 watermelon babies. Yeah. We'll wait and see what happens, right? Here is a spaghetti squash. And here are a whole bunch of slick picks and um, Nambia squash. And here is, oh, do you see it? Crazy. I hate you. All right. That's the uh, dreaded cabbage moth. Um, out in front here. Oh, here it is. All right, I'm going to stop chasing that around, I promise. That's got to be annoying. I got the ornamental aliums in here, and then I also have all of my pepper plants, which are not doing great. Look at all these weeds that came through with this rain. Holy cow. I'm going to have to come in here and um, fertilize all of these peppers. They're all okay, but they're really not growing very much. They're all real small still. They're getting buds, which I don't think it's time for them to have buds yet. This is a flowering carrot. And uh, I'm just a little worried about their, their growth. So I'm going to fertilize them. I'm going to go in and probably pull these calendula that are close to them and give them a little bit more room and hope that they do a little bit better. But it might not be the year of the pepper. I do think it's going to be the year of the onion. Look how big these guys are getting.
they're bulbing up nicely super nice now as these grow what you're supposed to do is kind of just pull things away from the bulb so it's got room to bulb out a little bit more you don't want it to be compact around them so I just kind of pull the mulch out just a little bit see this one's getting nice and big and I just kind of give it some room and then when these start to go brown and die you'll know it's time to go ahead and pull them up nice look here's the rest of those sound flowers over here <gasps> look at this dill over here flowering I'm gonna have to come harvest some dill and then I put a new dill patch in right here you can see all those babies coming up a zinnia patch in here and then I got all these nasturtiums which should come up and really kind of take over the edge of the space as those onions come out the nasturtiums should fill in and then here's the garlic oh that sun just popped out the garlic is looking good it's starting to die at the bottom you can see I got one dead leaf down here again I'm gonna wait until I get like four before I pull them but in the middle I did plant watermelon and it is coming up. So I got two there. Looks like I got three there. And I got two here. Plus all the ones that are volunteering themselves in the middle of my garden. So I should have plenty of watermelon. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, look, the calendula are blooming up here. We have to go look at them. Aww. And the animals love them. All the bugs, the good bugs. Look how pretty bright orange that is. These are the ones that Ava likes to eat, so I'm glad those are coming in. Gorgeous. Gorgeous sunny day in the garden. So I had to come hide in the shade. <laughs> because even though it just rained, it is um, hot. It is hot and muggy. You can feel like the moisture just hanging in the air. And um, I'm just sitting here sweating my butt off at nine in the morning. That could be because I'm in my mid forties and uh, my body has decided it's gonna go rogue. But there are worse problems to have, right? <laughs> sweating, sitting outside in your beautiful garden. I love it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the tour today. Sorry I didn't get it to you yesterday, but Mother Nature and Life dictated otherwise. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Go inside and clean my house. Because I have to. I can't stay outside on the garden all day, right? Right? <laughs> have a good day. I will see you guys all tomorrow.